A very good morning to you crafty lot. So this is Thursday the 18th of June. Me more than halfway through June. Can you believe that the time is just flying here? I hope everybody is okay and I've seen so many lovely pictures yesterday making quite a few makes what we've been making over the last few days in the Facebook lives. Um, it's it just been really great. You've been doing all sorts of different colorways and variations. That was really nice to see. I'm just going to wait a couple of um, <clears throat> minutes for everybody to join us and we're going to get um, started. We're going to make these really lovely bracelets today. They are done on elastic, but because the texture we're going to create, they look like something what you would have stitched together with needle and thread. Good morning, LJ. Good morning, um, Joe, Debbie, Sheila, Dean, Linda, Helen, um, Elaine, Judith, Alicia. Oh, there's so many of you. Good morning, Catherine. Um, I, I'll, I'll hear her. Um, she says, hello, Kitty, nice to see you. Good morning, Jackie, Linny. Oh, gosh, there's so many lovely ladies and gentlemen are here this morning. Good morning, Gillian, Margaret. So, um, I actually finished my bracelet yesterday, this one. So, we were doing this yesterday with the lovely, lovely peanut beads. Um, it come up just the perfect size for me with the little... Um, Button clasp on there, what we put on there. I saw here yeah, last night and finished it. I was again, it was a, a, a one more row night last night, so I was here, I don't know, about half past ten again, and um, beading, but never mind. Um, it's all for the level class. I just want to take this up because I don't want the thread to get caught on it today, right? So let me turn you over and put you into my lighting rig, and we can get started. Oh, Leanne is saying, I loved your hourglass braces yesterday. Really nice designs. Oh, I love them too as well. Um, good morning, Mina, Karen, Carol, Sarah, um, Sharon, Paula, Maxine, um, Annie, Tracy, Doris. Good morning, Doris. Camille, Jitty, Mina, Leanne, and Margaret over. So many of you. So let me just turn you over. I'm going to pop you into my lighting rig so we get a nice close up pictures there so the materials we're going to be using today is going to be check cabajons they are this um they are six millimeter in size and they've got two holes on them so i'm, just, I'm going to make a lovely silver color here they've got two holes going all the way through let me just take this out so we can focus on this and because they got two holes we can create sort of a woven effect. Then we're gonna use the super jewels and they have two holes on them as well. So they're gonna bind some of our other strings together. So when you're using two hole beads and you, you can use multiple, you can do multiple strands of jewelry, whether either, either on elastic or with stitching with needle and thread, but because they got two holes, they can bind two strands together. And that's really, really gonna be our foundation, our bracelet today. They are really lovely. I love these um, bracelets because they're really easy to put on and really easy to take off, but they still look like something what you would stitch together. They look much more just an elastic bracelet. So I really, I really love them. I got uh, quite a few colors upstairs of these elastic bracelets. I did a few designs and um, it was really, you know, they're really easy to take on. Right, let me show you the website quickly, what we got on the website. So if you go on totallybeads.co.uk, on the left-hand side or up of the categories, you go into Facebook tutorials. And here is today's one, which is the multi-row with cabajons called. Um, I added the big eye needles in there because they are, we're going to be working with flat, flossy elastic. And the big eye needles are really essential and really help you to work with that one the round elastic we worked with before that's a little bit more um i guess stiffer material so you can use it on its own you don't have to have a needle with it but with the flat elastic we can use a needle so it's a really a really quick make as well good morning margaret julianne annie um mina right so um all the different colors of Caroline on there, they're called Caroline bracelet. Now, if you put the word Caroline in when you check out, you will get 15% off of your um, order today. 
So do put, if you order any of these bracelets, do put um, Caroline in there at the end um, because you get 15% off of your order. So if you're watching it on Ketchup as well, if you're not watching it live today, then um, that order, that voucher code is going to stay on the website for seven days. So you will be able to take advantage of the offer. Doris is saying day bracelets are beautiful. Looking forward to days. I made the peanut ones last week. Everyone loved them. Oh yeah, I love those peanut ones as well. They're so elegant. Um, and he's saying morning kitty and everyone watching raining heavily here today. So I can't think of anything better than watching and beading. Oh, lovely. I think it's quite overcast and it's been raining here as well. So I'm going to be beading today. Um, Perhaps working on a new design, maybe. Like I need to make some samples up, but um, I didn't tell you anything. I just really, really love them. So I'm going to be playing with those today, later on after the Facebook Live. Right, so let me just get... Um, oh, Maxine is saying, I love the bracelet you're wearing. Yes, so if you check out our newsletter on a Saturday, there may be something in there about it. Let's 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 just wait and see. I'm, I'm not allowed to say anything. So we're going to be using the Czech cabochons, um, which are uh, got two holes. They got one flat side and they got a dome side to it. So the only thing we have to make sure here that we put the put them the right, we pick them up the same way as we go along. So they will sit um, the domed way up all the way. Um, Carol saying, good morning, Kitty. When I use elastic with big eye needles, the elastic shreds. Yes, I, do, I find that as well sometimes, but I'm going to show you a, a good tip about what to do. Or in fact, like, you know, we just take a little bit of extra material and I'll show you. Right, so we're using cabochons, we're using Super Joe's. We're going to use, again, these um, little two by three millimeter crystals. We used them yesterday on a bracelet and we're going to use them in this design as well. And just we're going to use some size 11 seed beads. But as we're going to construct our bracelet, we're going to start at the middle row. So we're going to pick up our cabochons and super jewels first and then we're going to add our super jewels to the other side and then we're going to do the last two strands on the outer sides on the end. So I hope this silver coral is going to come and show up nicely for you because I really I haven't got a silver bracelet yet and something like this, the silver one is really great to have because they do go with everything and with the finish you have on these... Um, cabajons and the super jewels as well so they are like a matte finish so they're really you get a really nice metallic look with them i'm just going to pop the seed beads and the crystals to the side because i not quite need them right big eye needles they come in various different sizes um it's really it's up to you which one which size you like i tend to like the longer sizes better because i always push the needle with one of my finger either my middle finger or my ring finger when i'm doing designs and with the big eye needle both of the ends are sharp so that's that's hence when I'm when I'm using smaller ones, I'm still trying to use it as a normal needle. And when I'm pushing it through, I'm always pricking my finger. So I tend to like to use the longer ones, not the shorter ones. Now these needles are the single ones are 75p, or you get a selection of them for two pound fifty. They are a great investment, and the whole of the needle is an eye so i'm just going to go and open this multi-pack up and i'm just going to use one of these the multi-pack is great especially the one with the different sizes because you get um an assortment there so let's let's not go for the longest one but i'm going to use the second longest one here so if i just turn this a little bit i can open up the eye on the needle my nails are quite thick so come on, come apart. That's it. So the whole of the needle is an eye. Can you see that? So it's really great to work with. Now, when we're working with a flat elastic, flat elastic is like a flossy material. So it has many, many strands woven together. When I'm working with this, I'm only catching the end, maybe a couple of centimeter or an inch at the end because um, as... Um, was it Annie was saying that it can fray? 
because the needle itself is made of metal and then the elastic constantly rubbing against that um, bottom, the bottom sort of eye edge of the needle, it can sort of, um, I, I suppose, cut um, a couple of these little threads and then they can start fraying down. So what I do, I just catch the end and maybe when I get halfway around the bracelet, I just move my needle just a few millimeters down. So even if it's like I caught and I cut some of the floss in the elastic, I just got a little bit new bit, but you don't have to move it down much. Maybe half a centimeter is enough just to take the tension away. So you're not always working from the same point. Right, I'm going to work on the reel. I'm not going to cut it off yet. And it, uh, as a stopper as well, so my beads can't fly on the, through the other side. Now, the only thing you need to make sure when you're working with two whole beads, and I usually do this, so um, I pick it up with a needle and I very quickly just sort of look um, through the hole to make sure the other hole is not... Um, not blocked by anything because maybe one bead out of a hundred you do get a bead where the hole is being blocked by either the plating or something which in there now when i said you have to pick up these cabochons always the same way so i like to sort of put them down a hole going at the top and a hole going at the bottom um and um i'm always going through the top one so when i bring that down I will then have both of my cabochons are sitting the same way because if I pick one up at the bottom hole, then it, then it goes down, that will turn around and we're going to end up with one at the dome side and the other one is flat and we want all of them sitting nicely by the dome side. So the pattern is quite easy. You're going to pick up one cabochon and then two super duos and you're going to do that all the way down. It does quilt quite quickly, the bracelet. Oh, Sue so is saying pouring rain here in North Devon. Let me just bring all your lovely, I've got my computer here, so I'm just gonna bring up all your messages so I can see it, because when I'm looking down on uh, my mat, the messages on my phone, it's a little bit further up in my lighting rig, they go so quickly. But we do need the rain, don't we? We really, the garden, our garden really needs to rain. Every so often do stop and if you pull your rustic out then your beads are by gravity gonna hang down in a way and then I just sort of put it down and turn them to make sure that I pick them up the right way. And just keep on going all the way around. Now depending on how big you want it to make your bracelet, obviously we're making elastic so it's got a little bit of a give and take in it that, um, Obviously, it's a little bit smaller, it's still going to fit. I need 22, I think. Let me just double count this. 19. Got 19 on here. Five. Yeah, I've got 19 and that fits me perfectly. So probably if you've got a little bit smaller leaves, you can get away with 17 cabochons on your strand and if you started with a cabochon then you need to finish with two super duos if you started with the super duos then you need to finish with the cabochon just to complete your pattern right let me very quickly pick these up so i because i'm working with the longer big eye needle here I can pick up quite a few of the patterns but then when I get to pull them down I will pull them down since like you know like bead by bead really if I wanted to pull the lot of them together it will put a real a bit of a stress on the bottom of the bead so even if I picked up quite a few I'm gonna go up and just pull them down one by one and then I pull them through again I'm just gonna pull them down one by one and then very quickly we are building our bracelet here cabochon next super churros 
So if you are watching for the first time or we had such an amazing reaction last week, it was so nice to see it that you all started commenting where you're from and we had people from Ohio, from Australia, from New Zealand, from all over the world. So do please put, um, I just wanted to say morning all here from Cromwell UK, uh, do put um, a comment under where you're from. Um, I'm just, I'm just so amazed. I'm so baffled about um, that the power of the internet that you can, you know, reach so many people across the globe, um, and like people can join us from all over. Really, it just really, it just really amazes me. And I'm just going through that cabochon. Oh, Catherine is saying, I'm so excited. I'm moving to Walton next week. Oh, so lovely. So Catherine is one of our local ladies. She lives in Colchester at the moment. Well, until next week. She used to come to some of our beat clubs, which hopefully we will be able to get back to soon and do workshops and beat clubs at the warehouse. And um, she, I think it was last summer or end of the summer, start of the autumn, um, she decided that um, they seen this lovely house in Walton that they're going to move. And, um, oh, that's really great news. You're going to be on our doorstep. So that's it. Let me just count quickly how many. Hi, I'm, I'm from the Highlands of Scotland. That's Betty. Good morning, Betty. Um, Diane is saying damp and miserable Manchester. Oh, no, it's quite damp and miserable here, too. Um, Teresa is saying it's 517 in Georgia, USA. Oh, lovely. And Tita saying I'm still waiting for the five millimeter setting glass beads. Think the post has fall asleep. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, we, we try to get everything out. Oh, Michelle is saying from Nottinghamshire, um, we try to get everything out as quick as we can. Um, pretty much the same day um, when you place your order. But um, unfortunately, once the parcel leaves our premises, we are in the hand of the postal service. And it's, you know, it's how long Royal Mail can take um i know they were black backlogged a few weeks back and they were saying they got three weeks worth of parcels to deliver and but i think they they depending on what area are you in the uh, things are slightly changing we only getting a still only getting a post every other day here let me see hopefully we'll be back to normal Right, let's pull these down. I think I got the right amount. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Right, so I started with a cabochon. I'm going to finish on two super duos. Just picking up the last two and slide them down. Um, Doris say I ordered mine too. Hope they come today. Marcia saying hi. Angela saying, I'm working near Dingwall, but live in Angus in Scotland. Uh, Diane saying, posted parcel on Monday, second class arrived next day in Stratford. So I think it does depend, like, um, or somebody's saying I picked up four super jewels. Oh, yes, I did. Thank you so much. Oh, no, there's another one in here. <sighs> We're going to have to go back. I'm really, really sorry. It's like me chatting, trying to read the messages as well. And then I make a mistake. But I'm one of those people that if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter how long I beat it. I need to go back and redo it. Thank you so much for pointing out. Because after I knotted it, that would have been so annoying on my second strand. Um... Oh, sorry. So it shows you, I guess, that we all make mistakes and we all... So I made a um, really big mistake last week, which I haven't made for quite a few years. So I was doing a bracelet and on the bracelet I was using toggle clasp and I had a lot of toggle clasp and loads of sort of different colours and different bits on my mat. And um, I was in and out and the children went home so sort of every five minutes you know i'm hungry i'm thirsty can i have this can i have that and um 
So basically what happened is I sewn both of the same end. So then you have a toggle clasp, you have a round loop where you close your toggle in. And what happened in that particular day, I sewn the both ends um, where the round loops. So that was like a very big oopsie moment, but I had to take it apart. But I did do it before when I was doing like, um, oh, the Rivoli's, we we're covering Rivoli's. Are they all all right? Yes, they're all all right so far. We we're covering Rivoli's and I was putting this necklace together with all these rivers I covered and it was really some my husband was away so sometimes when my husband is away I take sort of um, a tray of beads up to the bedroom and just do bits of pieces and put something on um, the computer and just watch it so on this particular night I spent probably about an hour sewing this necklace together with all the uh, the rivers already encased and then I spent an hour and a half taking it apart because I made a mistake quite at the beginning so I think we all are right now they all twos yep that's it I'm just gonna pick up my last two super duos um Catherine is saying desperate to get back to work I think quite a lot of people went back to work this week, but some of them are going to be later. Right, so we just double checking. I'm going to pull this apart so my beads get a little bit space between them so gravity can pull them down. I'm just going to roll it on the mat. And yes, they all sit the same way, so we are good to go. I'm going to knot this together, so I'm going to cut the other end off as well. I'm not going to leave a big tail because obviously the less material we, we're just going to cut the ends off so the less material we waste is the better i'm going to slightly push pull pull my string apart slightly push these um beads together so i get a nice little tension on there and then i'm just going to knot it now there's many different ways you can knot your beads or sorry not the beads you're not knotting the beads you're knotting your elastic i like to when i use floss elastic i just like to use normal knots and i do about three half knots and just don't do big pulls on them because then it can break just slightly little pulls just sort of flexing because you want that little knot to the elastic is sort of to bite into each other and that's it that's our first round is done right so we're not going to need the cabochons anymore i'm going to move them out of the way because we've finished with them we're going to use our super duos next so now we're going to go back into it now i do like to start my next strand is where this one finished so i have my knots sort of in one row on a bracelet let's have a look if we can find it on this one where are you knots because they're quite oh there they are so because they're quite small, they do disappear between the beads. But um, if you make a small knot, sometimes you can pull them inside the holes of the beads as well, which then makes it even more neater. But I, it's, this is what is great about this pattern that you can't really see, and I really can't find it on this one. I must have pulled it into a bead that you can't see where the beginning and the end is. Oh no, there they are. And with this flat elastic, it comes in different colors as well. So you can match the flat elastic to the color of your beads. So it disappears even more. I can see you answering. You're having a nice little chat amongst each other, which is so great. And I was talking to a lady yesterday. I was talking to Chef. Um, I think quite a few of you made friends um, while we were in lockdown over the Facebook live and messaging each other. She said there was a lady messaging her from Canada. So I think it's really great. I'm just so you know, happy and baffled with the power of the internet that we can all connect with each other. Right, so my end is here. So I want my next knot when I'm going around right here next to this cabochon. So I'm gonna start by picking up two super duos. Oops, and I just flicked both of them across the room. Two procedures, I'm gonna pull them down and then <clears throat> I'm gonna go through the cabochon but through the other hole. 
and pull this up a little bit and then I'm just gonna pick up another two super duos pull these down and then go through the next cabochon and pull this up and as you can see our pattern is already forming and we're adding the super duos in to the other side so you need to do that all the way along around your bracelet so just keep picking up two super duos pull them down so i like to pull them down first and then go to the cabochon it just makes an easier but when you're working with needle and thread you would pick up the beads and just sort of go through wherever you need to go whatever bead you need to go through in your pattern but with the, when i'm using flat elastic i always like to pull them down first and then it's so much easier to get them through the cabochon i need to go through just pull this back a bit because i don't want a large length and as i'm going along i'm pulling the super jewels on the other side sort of away from the middle and just adding adding this in oh chef saying good morning kitty it was lovely to see you yesterday yeah chef uh, popped up um to the outside of the warehouse to pick up an order because we are not open and i don't know when we're going to be open for open days or anything like that but um so from some of our local customers sometimes um well, when, when we see something and we want the beads, we don't really want to wait for it. So they, she popped up and um, I bought the order out for her. So we had a little socially distant chat outside, which was really great. So I'm keep picking up my two super duos and going all the way along. It's not going to take long, I guess. We're going to be on the other side very quick now if, if you find a bead which has got a blocked hole which sometimes it does happen oh they are saying i wish i live nearby sometimes it does happen try to before you sort of take your all your design back and um, undo it try to if you sort of wiggle a needle through the hole sometimes it frees it up because sometimes it's just a little bit of a you know something stuck in there just keep going not saying you need some chairs outside of our house i think we got some garden chairs somewhere in the warehouse i don't know what happened to them So I just keep going, adding my two. And going through that cabochon. Fiona is asking, do you sell the needles? Yes, we do. So these are the needles. They are the big eye needles where the whole of the needle is an eye and the small the single ones are 75 p each and then we have some packs on there as well i think you get four in a pack for 250 yes i think it's 250 and there are a couple of different packs there is one with the same sizes and there is one there which has got an assortment in there the single ones come in shorter and longer lengths as well so let me just show you that's that's the shorter one and that's the longer one it's really it's worth the invest into one of these because when you're working with flat elastic it's just so much easier but um i like the longer one purely for purely for the reason because when i'm doing any stitching what happens is as i push my needle through my bead i always push it with my finger and with this needle having sharp ends on both ends if I'm using a longer one, I have more space to push the needle through than pull it from the other side. And when you're using a shorter one, especially when you're going through beads, you 
like tend to I, I always tend to push it with my either my middle or ring finger um jane's saying hi kitty is the code caroline only apply if you buy a kit in with order so the code caroline is for the kids so if you want any of the caroline kids which are on our facebook uh, tutorial page today and uh, that this is the one what i'm making that is what you're going to get 15 percent off not the whole of your order if you want to do sometimes we give you bundles and we give you set prices for it but sometimes some people watch it later on or or watch it next day i guess um as they are working or they got i suppose other engagements as well to do so um, we tried this a few weeks back when we were doing the ginkgo beads the ginkgo bracelet to give you a voucher code what you see in the video and then you can use it for a week afterwards on the website because usually if you put a sale on a particular item it like ends the next day so we just wanted to make sure that you can take advantage yeah i went all the way around so as you can see this is what i um was saying about that when you pulling keep pulling your thread to it can fray a little bit at the end we're gonna knock this off anyway but if that happens you can always just move your needle down slightly i'm gonna pull some of these length back because i got too much tail here so just to have less of a end there that's it and then i'm gonna just trim this end here and knot this one together as well so before i knot it i'm gonna put the super jewels to the side because i don't need them anymore before i knot it what you have to make sure that your bracelet is not twisted so i like to wrap it sort of around my finger and just check it i have them on the same side I think some, I must have pulled it in there. I'm so sorry. I must have pulled the end in there, but never mind. I'm just going to grab my pair of pliers. I must have caught on my... Um, don't disappear. Let's pull this through. That's it. Just add this super jewel back. I'll thread you without the needle. Ooh. Troubleshooting here. I had to add this needle back to the end and I just dropped that super jewel off. But my end is quite small now. So sometimes it's easier to work with longer, I suppose, ends. So you don't get into a pickle. That's it. Or we saved it so you want to put it around your hand make sure that your bracelet is straight and not twisted because if you if it's then it's twisted in some way you won't be able to untwist it later on other than you undo your ends i'm gonna get these out of the way these the ends i already knotted and i'm gonna knot these together in the same manner as i did the other one just give a little bit of a tug hold it and just do a normal knot so left over right right over left and i'm going to do a left over right again just sort of three half knots i get to secure it and later on before i finish and trim my ends up i'm going to add a little bit of nail varnish pull these ends out of the way make sure they're not crossing each other that's it and just pull this tight so as you can see our middle our bone of the bracelet is done and now we're gonna go along and add our edges so i'm gonna go back to my reel i'm gonna thread it in again just separate the needle so this is why they're called big eye needles because the whole of the needle is an eye pop my end in i'm only going to pop you know just an inch of the end i don't need to double it up because um 
we only use it singly and now I'm going to need my two by three millimeter little crystal rondels and my seed beads and we're going to go and fill the gaps just on the side of the cabochons and uh, between the two super jewel beads so between the two super jewel beads we're going to add a seed bead and on the top of the cabochons you're going to add a couple of crystals to add a little bit of sparkle to your bracelet so I'm going to find my ends because I want to have them in a nice row. Just get this out of the way. If you have, which I got here, these little bead stoppers they're called, the little spring clasp, just to hold your ends temporarily, I can, I'm going to add this to it so they don't tangle up so I'm just going to open it up put my ends in there and just sort of let it, let it dangle in there and because if this has got a little bit of weight one of them escaped a little bit of a weight to it it will keep my ends together to one side so it will be out of my way that's it and now I can go in so there is my let's do this side first so there is my knot on my previous thread. So I'm just going to go through this super duo. And between the super duos, we're going to add a seed bead. So I'm just going to pick up a size 11 seed bead, take that down, and then go through the next super duo. And then pick up two of the crystal beads. Take these down and then go through the next super to the through the free hole and pull it up tight and then pick up another seed bead. Go through the next super so we're just filling these gaps on our bracelet. with this one I was looking at the screen on my computer to see if you got any questions um Betty Michelle is saying Betty be careful with glue you use as it can rot the elastic could try a jewelry glue such as e6000 I prefer clear nail varnish just one I use for jewelry making so to secure your knots, yes, you can use super glue or you can use um, clear nail varnish. I will show you at the end how to apply them because you don't want to apply it to your the elastic which is on your bracelet. You want to apply it to the elastic above the knot on your tail end because you only want to seal the ends. And you want to make sure that the, the glue or the clear nail varnish doesn't seep past your knot. And that will give a little bit of a longer lifetime for it because sometimes some of the super glues, depending on what type they are, they can make your elastic brittle and then they can snap. So I'm just keep adding my crystals and my seed beads all the way around, but that's really. I just want to add a few more so I can show you the pattern, but that's really how easy it is to make your bracelet. And it does look like something where you were stitched together with needle and thread, but because you're using four lines of flat elastic here, it's really easy to take off and put on with no beginning or no end. If you use the voucher called Caroline today, you will get 15% off these kits on the website. If you joined us, they called Caroline on our website, which is totallybeads.co.uk. We got a page called Facebook Tutorials where you can find today's tutorial with the relevant kits as well. And you can go back and we've been doing these videos. Gosh, I think this is week 14, but I think I need, I need to go back and double check in my diary because 
time is going so fast here. I said time, time goes fast when you're having fun. But time is flying past for us. And um, I keep saying, oh, we've been doing it for seven weeks. And in that point, I think we were doing it for 10 weeks. And then I kept saying that, oh, we're doing it for 10 weeks. And at that point, we were doing it for 12 weeks. And I think in one of the videos at the end of May, 28th of May it was, I told you it was 28th of April. So that's that's me, I guess. So if your elastic frays a little bit at the top, just sort of unhook it from the end and just pull it down a centimeter or so, so you don't have any of the, your fraying is not gonna travel down. So I'm just keep adding my seed beads between the two super jewels, and when I'm above a cabochon, then I'm gonna add two crystals. Now, any bracelet like this, you can do it with other, other two hole beads or you can do them with some bracelet bars or anything you like. When I'm doing a multi-row elastic bracelet, if it's more than two um, strands, I like to use this flossy elastic because the flossy is called flat elastic actually, but me and Sarah keep um, referring to as flossy elastic because they got this flossy material and um, they actually look like dental floss, but this one is stretchy. This one is more stretchy than the round elastic. So if I'm doing something which I want to do two or more strands on the bracelet, I like to use this type. If I'm just using a single strand elastic bracelet, then I like to use the round elastic because that's um, not, not as stretchy, a little bit... Um, I guess stronger is this. They both, it, it stronger is not the right word because they're both um, quite strong materials for different reasons, but um, that one is not as stretchy as this one. So if you had four strands of the round elastic on the same bracelet, you couldn't stretch your head that much to get it over your knuckles on your hand. And if you're using larger beads and more heavier beads, um, they can pull this elastic apart. So if it was a larger bead, um, your bracelet could, you know, slag a little bit down on your hand because the weight of the beads would pull this elastic down. So then I like to use a thicker round. Uh, Margaret is asking, could you use a tiger tail and a clasp on this bracelet? You could stitch it up as you would be stitching any other bracelet using needle and thread with the pattern. Because as I said, you could do any of these bracelets with two whole beads or bracelet bars or anything like that to binding the strands together. Um, you just have to work out how many beads or what size of beads you have to add between your your links so because the space i have here is about four millimeter so i could add two of these two by three crystals or in fact i could add a four millimeter round bead if i added a four millimeter round bead it would stick out a little bit more and i wanted my the edge of my bracelet is nice and flush so it's really it's up to you. You could play around with all sorts of different designs. Over the years, we've done quite a few of these elastic bracelets because they are so easy to take off. It's very easy to put on, um, very, very comfortable to wear because it moves and sort of forms with your hand. Um, so it's it just, um, you know, some people think that if you make an elastic bracelet, it's like cheap and cheerful, but... Um, elastic bracelet can be very elegant and um, very easy, easy wear too. I would prefer something like this on elastic like this because it's really comfortable to wear then and tiger tail would make the bracelet more rounder and um, sort of keeping the shape of it. Right, I'm not going to go all the way through because probably took me another 15-20 minutes to make it and we've been here for 45 minutes already. Sharon is asking, does it have to be flat elastic? I have several lots of the rounds. You can try with some of the thinner round ones, but if you do quite a few strands, like this one is asking for four strands, you would um, 
it wouldn't be that stretchy. So because the nature of these, these are really stretchy and then you can get it over your knuckles very nice and easily. If you do the same pattern with round elastic, you wouldn't be able to stretch it out that much. I haven't got anything with round elastic here, but I think if I show you on these two, so probably the round elastic, you could stretch it out that much. And this one, you could stretch it out two or three times more because of the nature of the elastic. But it can be done in round one as well. I have done um, bracelets uh, similar to this in round elastic as well. So it's just, I suppose, playing, playing with your materials, what you have, try it out. Let me know if you do do it. Let me know how you get on with it or depending on what elastic, I suppose, or what size you have. Um, Betty's saying, I didn't pay attention, does the elastic come in the kit? So let me just show you, I'm just going to go back to my iPad. Let me just show you. So this is the page which is called, why is that came up? This is the page in the categories. If you go into Facebook tutorials, there is today's one. I'm going to click on that and all your bracelets here. If you put Caroline in your basket when you, not, when you check out, there is a, um, box there but you can use your voucher code it you it's it shows you it will give you 15 percent now each of each of the kits you get all the cabajons you get all the super jewels you get all the seed beads and the crystals what you need to make for it and at the bottom here you got the option to add a big eye needle for 75p or add a reel of flat elastic now a reel of flat elastic has got 10 meters on there so that's enough properly about nine or ten bracelets so if you buy two or three bracelets you will really need one flat elastic for it um clear one or or the more it's not really clear it's like a clearly white like a milky white this one goes with quite a lot of them but equally we have other colors of flat elastic so with the gold ones i used like a brownie color so it's really gold the bronzy one it disappears into the beads um with the purple one i used a purple one and the blue one i used a blue one so it's a very light shade of blue but you could do this in white as well this one what color did i use i used like a, a rosy pink color with this one so again it disappears this is the great thing about flat elastic round elastic doesn't really come in colors but flat elastic does come in colors so you can um make it disappear make make your strand slightly disappear so i'm almost at the end here um lucy's saying i made this bracelet last week i got in a bit of a pickle with knots but um but it turned out really lovely I think because you have, if you do get in a pickle with the knots, what you can do, you could knot one off, um, put your nail varnish on there, so or glue if you're using glue. Oh, I've run out of crystals, need a few more crystals. Wait until it dries and cut it off, and then go and do your second strand, and then you haven't got any ends, any tails sort of sitting there and flipping about. I'm almost, I'm going to go all the way around because I only got about three or four beads to add here, three or four gaps, and we're going to knot this together and then I'll show you how to do the nail varnish or glue, how to add it onto your knots. Now if I was adding glue, and usually glue comes with um, like a um, pointed end, so you can precision put it on your work, I'm never ever sort of just dab a glue on the end because you properly gonna squeeze up like 10 15 times more what you actually need so what i like to do here at dent let me just knot this together and i'll show you what i like to do is to take a toothpick and just dip it into the end of the glue and then i can very precisionly apply where i want to apply my glue on the top of the knot so it doesn't sort of seep in or goes all over everywhere nail varnish is a good option to use because on the nail varnish you already have and now i wipe most of the nail varnish what's going on with these scissors it doesn't really want to cut um you will gonna wipe off most of the nail varnish off of your 
brush and just really apply a tiny bit to the top. Let me just knot this strand together and then I will show you how to apply it and where to apply it. And he's saying, I think this one called Caroline. Yes, it is. This is one of my favorites because it creates such a lovely pattern. Right, so we knotted that together and oh, I got my nail varnish. I had a little tidy up the other day and I moved the bits about. And for a second, I was worried that um, I moved this somewhere else, but no, it's there. So I'm just gonna pull this end out so you can see the knot. So there is my knot. Um, I don't want to apply the glue anywhere near my bead, so I'm just going to wrap this around my finger and pull it out tight. So the glue I want to apply towards my tail and glue or nail varnish, I want to apply it towards my tail and I'm going to bring this up a little bit. I'm going to take most of the nail varnish off on the side of the nail varnish bottle. And then I'm going to go in and my knots are there and I'm just going to go above my knot and do a little stroke. And as I did that little stroke, you can see some of the nail varnish is just seeped down onto the, my elastic there. And I'm going to leave that there to dry. You can then hold it up a little bit horizontally so it goes into the knots. But I don't want, let me just grab a needle so I can point it to it for you. So I don't want the nail varnish on this part at all towards my, or, or on the last knot uh, towards my um, beads here. I want it on the top of my tail end. So this one is gonna be nice and stretchy. And this one, the top part of the knot is gonna harden up with my, with the nail varnish there and then once that dry wait until you dry you can cut quite close to it so i usually leave maybe just a couple of millimeters and if you were next to a bead which has got a larger hole then you can pull that knot right into the bead and then it disappears and you get a really nice bracelet so now i would go i need to go in on the other side and just repeat this pattern adding my crystals and my seed beads so I'm going to join, I want all my knots in a row here. So I'm going to join my, um, new, I'm still using the same needle, so you can use it again and again and again. They're so handy to have these big eye needles. I'm going to, I slightly push the top and the bottom together to form sort of a dome shape with it. And then I force my, needle sort of but not needle <laughs> i force my fingernails sort of between the two eyes here but my nails because i've done my nails and they're quite thick at the end um they don't really that's it want to go with the needle so has anybody's got any question i'm just going to carry on and do some of this side but keep um and I and have you got any questions, please um, let me know and um, I can answer it now. If I do miss any old questions, I usually go back in the video later on in the afternoon and um, we'll answer any of the questions. Um, Marion is asking, so if you order the kit and the elastic, does the elastic come in a color you would go with the kit yes it does so if you order the gold kit then you're gonna get the brownie elastic if you order a blue one then you're gonna get a blue elastic we always make sure we match the elastic up for you some of the silvery colors or um they do come like this one will come with the white one this milky white elastic and some of the colors will come with um, the shades they need to go but all you really need is super duos cabajons two by three millimeter crystals which we had a bundle on yesterday so if you manage to get that bundle then um, they are the, exactly the same side of what we used yesterday for this peanut beads exactly the same size of what we're using today and this is why we wanted to put some um, bundles together because i know many of you already got some beads at home perhaps just need a few different bits of pieces and then in the bundle we can give you some great um 
a better price, I guess. Because if you like me, you can't just make one colour. You have to keep on going and um, play with all the colours. And I and I that's I love that part. When I work, sometimes me for me working at a stitch can take me. I don't know, maybe anything between half a day to a day, depending on how complicated it is. Sometimes I come up with it, come up with a design for the first couple of tries, and sometimes I got 10 times at it until I get it right. But um, then I usually take a couple of days just to play with all the different colors to make sure we have a really nice and good combination of colors for the kids. Because I think that's um, really important to have a nice balance in colors because it's all about when you're working with colors it's all about proportions so if you put um different bags of seed beads or different bags of super jewels or cabbage or anything next to each other and you're gonna think they're gonna look great they're gonna look really you know balanced with each other and then if you make them up you might not use the same amount. So what I'm saying, the cabochon is here in this design is taking um, sort of precedence over any of the other beads because that's the bead what you see most. So the the and you only see the seed bead, you only see the tiny amount. So maybe 10, not even 5% of the bracelet is seed beads. Um, maybe 10% of the bracelets is crystals. Um, maybe 30% of them is the super jewels of the surface of the um, bracelet here. And, um, you know, 65% of them is the cabochons. So when you put the bags next to you that each other and all the four bags are the same size, you're seeing the color by 25% proportion of each color because you see them equally and they look good but when you mix them up and some of the colors sort of take precedent over other colors um the whole of the i suppose your color scheme is gonna shift or change a little bit but i love doing all that sometimes i could spend two days just sitting there making up little samples of bits of pieces just to try out colors i just really find it fascinating to work with all sorts of different colors. Um, Caroline is saying, hi Kitty, I have just tuned in. Is the Molly kit the same bracelet as the Caroline one? Yes, the Molly makes one is exactly the same as the Caroline one. Is This is the color way, this lovely silver, the Molly makes one. And uh, Caroline is what we call it. The Molly make one, we designed that for Create and Craft last year because they wanted something um, sort of like a silver or gold color something what uh, everybody would wear and um, it was in their magazine so and then we added to the website as well because I really love this color but if you if you add the Molly makes one to your basket and the put the word voucher called Caroline at the checkout, you will get 15% off of that as well. That kit. So the 15% off is for the kits what we're using today. We're trying to do a couple of different things because if you are watching this on catch up, if you watch it a couple of days late, sometimes you you know can't take advantage of we do so, sometimes savings for the day. And this way, if we, when we offer a voucher cord, you can um then take an advantage of it later on in the week as well or next week we usually leave it on for a week i'm actually almost all the way around while i've been chatting here so might as well just go ahead and finish this bracelet and i can wear it Mina is saying i love mixing color if i have the beads in different color I always do it during the daytime as colors look better with natural daylight oh yes that's absolutely true. So what I when I got big projects to work out on, I usually first think in the morning or sometime sort of in the morning when you got that when, when I got the sunlight nice and um really light in, in my office, I would just put the colour bags next to each other and just sort of put them on a tray um waiting to be made and 
match them up what I think they're gonna look the best and then later in the evening if you're watching a movie then I can work through my little color list there and um, see which one it works but beads do look different in natural light and do look different in artificial light and especially what type of light bulb you have because you can have um, sort of a yellow light bulbs which are the warm ones and now you can buy the blue ones which are cool ones so depending on what light bulb do you have they will look different as well i do have a lamp with a natural light bulb um which are they're quite expensive because about 10 or a pop which sometimes make it as close as it can get to the bead color with that one i guess so it makes a life a little bit easier in the evening but still the best to choose the colors during the day and i have beads which are lilac beads and it's so i'll, I'll um i dig it out um, and i'll show you in one of these videos I'll probably have to show you in the evening time when it's dark but um or maybe i can just pull the blinds down so that lilac bead, when you look at it in natural light, it looks lilac. And then in the evening, it looks a light blue. I think it's to do with the properties of the color inside that bead that changes how the light hits it. It changes its color slightly. So from lilac, it goes to blue. And um, I was, um, we were designing something with Sarah not long ago and she was choosing the beads and she chose the lilac beads and then she walked away with the tray and the, the and the beads turned blue and then she's saying well what are these blue beads doing on my tray and then then she walked back and then they turned back to lilac and she was like what what's happening what's happening to the beads and that was just the color um, Dorothy is saying, I bought an auto light as I struggle with shades, thins and it's fab. Yeah, they're really good as well. There's many different companies out there doing daylight bulbs. But I think it's best to choose during the day. So I got two more crystals and a seed beads and I'm done. So I might as well just go ahead and finish this. Um, Jennifer is saying a daylight bulb is good for beading and close work. Yes, but now the LED lights as well, they're coming along so much and they're really great as well. We did have a little clip-on battery-operated LED light last year, which I'm hoping we can get back in stock very soon. I have ordered them. They are really great because you can clip them on the side. I haven't got, I think my, I put my one away, but I... um. I love it because you can clip it on the side of your table or if you're working on a lap tray, a side of your lap tray. And the battery does last up to three hours, depending on what setting you're using. And they're just little LED lights. They're really great as well. I'll let you know when they come back in stock because they weren't that expensive either. I think they were like a tenner, but it's a rechargeable battery inside so it's not like you have to change your own batteries it's a rechargeable battery inside and um you can just keep using it and using it and using it in fact i actually have two i got one in the lounge as well so i can have one on charge and i can have one what i'm using right so i'm just gonna knot this last strand as well and that's it Oh, Dirty Say, I like your clip-on light too. So lightweight, yes. And especially for like, take something up to the bedroom, which I, I like, you know, I try not to do, but sometimes, you know, I, I wanna finish something, but wanna be really comfortable and nice and cozy at the same time. So I take something up, they are really handy because you can just have them on the side of the mat and, and it shines the light directly on where you need it. I was sunny saying, I made my first chip tree yesterday. I use 0.3 millimeter wire, but have ordered 0.4 wire today. So the tree is what we made on the website. And we did use 0.4 wire because I found the 0.3 is just a little bit too um, soft. And it can be, your bracelet, your, your, uh, your tree can become a little bit floppy. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of nail varnish to these ends as well. So I'm just pulling all those knots away from my 
beads and I'm just applying a tiny glue on my tail ends. And naturally I would wait until this is dry. I'm sure it's gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna snip it off. So I'm just gonna snip, leave for about two, three millimeters at the end, just above my knot. And I'm gonna cut it all of them off. Get rid of those tail ends and that's it. So because of the knots are quite small as well, um, they would just sort of disappear. Just trim this one a little bit more. Disappear in my bracelet and that's it. My bracelet is ready to wear. I really do like it. I think I might would have needed one extra cabochon on it. I measured it up to the wrong one. So I might actually sit here and make another one for myself. They're really comfortable, very easy to take on and to put on, and you can make them in so many different colors. We got many different color combinations on the website, but you can make your own color combinations as well um, using your check six millimeter check cabochons. You're gonna need super duos, not mini duos because they're too small. You're gonna need super duos. You're gonna need it two by three millimeter crystals. Now the crystals as well come in so many different colors and a four strand of crystals, we do you two bracelets and then you're gonna need seed beads, but the seed beads you need is like less than a gram. So again, just a few seed beads, just to space between on between those um, super juice just to fill that gap. But you can make up all sorts of different patterns as well. Let, let me just turn you back around. That's it, I am here. Just turn that light up so I can see you. Yeah, it's quite dull and miserable out there, look. Not, not nice and sunny how it's been in the last few days, but we can't grumble because the garden really, really needs the, the rain here. My grass is like really going almost brown. Right, I just want to show you what we're going to do tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to make this really lovely beaded beads. So these ones are the crystal biconeridite beads. You can make them in various different sizes. Very, very easy to make. You remember last week with Sarah was showing you how to make, I got some here. Let me just grab this up. We'll show you how to make these beads, these lovely Czech Crescent Erudite beads. And tomorrow we're gonna make the crystal ones. And what you can actually do, once you start making all different style of these, you can mix and match together. So you can put them on the same strand. You can either like a bead, a herringbone chain for them, or just use one of your own chains. Because the beads got larger holes, they can really go with um, whatever you, whatever you wanna put them on. And you can make them in all sorts of different sizes. I love these beads, they're just really, I guess what I love about them, because you can sit there and make a bead up and start a collection and all of a sudden in like, you know, after a few beads, you're gonna have, you know, a nice little collection, but a bead probably gonna take you like 15, 20 minutes to make, so you could make up one when you have like a little bit of a time and then um, come back and, you know, add them all together later on or, or turn something else into, I found one of those bracelets in my box there. So that's it for me today. Do check out the website. Check out the, put Caroline in the, on the checkout in your box, in your voucher code box, and you're gonna get 15% off of these lovely bracelets. If you do need add needle and your elastic, where's my elastic gone? Elastic to your basket. It's an option within the kit. Um, one elastic, probably gonna do you eight or 10 bracelets. You don't need so many of them. The needle again is gonna go forever. They're really handy to have. Um, Dorothy saying would make a lovely scarf ring too in bigger beads. Yes, it would. I also um I re I was talking about somebody about scarf rings the other day, and I I've, I've got something in mind what I really want to do for it because I love my scarves. I wear them all the time. Um, I I suppose I don't like when my neck is cold. If if neck and feet if my neck and feet is full, warm i'm warm all over but if my neck or feet is cold then I, I'm, I'm like cold all the time so i love my scarves i got so many um some just thinner ones just sort of to chuck on there to warm my neck but um i was talking about um 
scarf rings about somebody today and I think we could make some really amazing ones. Right, so that's it for me today. Tomorrow I'll be back. We're going to be making these lovely, very sparkly bracelets. And um, not bracelets, I'm sorry. <laughs> I go and need, I need to go and sit and um, have some breakfast. I think my uh, brain is saying no now. So we're going to make these lovely erudite, crystal erudite beads. Um, there is different size of crystals you can use for that but the pattern is pretty much the same um for every single size you you just you know you you can with one if you learn the technique you can make you can use quite a few of them um whatever you have at home and you don't need so many beads per bead so as like here i got all sort of different colors on this one even if you just have a few bicones you can make a bracelet up, but you can put them together to form a rainbow or ombre or anything you like so thank you so much oh lord this is saying oh yes please scarf yes um i'm, I'm on that one because um I, I had something in mind and um I'll, I'll have a little play with it so um that's it for me today be back tomorrow at 10 a.m um join our groups if you if you're not in on one of our groups on facebook the totally handmade is probably the one which is um i think there's about 1500 people in there now but the sharing the pictures they makes i love to see whatever you're making or if you come up with a different design try different beads as well i love to see that too um have a little play stay safe everybody um check out the website remember voucher code caroline to get 15 percent off of your uh, bracelets and um, stay safe everybody, keep on crafting and I see you tomorrow. Bye!